Hi, I'm Olivia Dean and this is Learning at Home TV. It's broadcast right here on 7-2, three mornings a week to help make learning stress-free for primary school students. Each Monday, Wednesday and Friday, some wonderful teachers from across Queensland schools join us to present lessons for children in three age groups. Early years, middle primary and upper primary. Those lessons include English, maths and science. And we also share other important messages and advice with the kids. Coming up, we have some tips that will help everyone stay fit and healthy. In English, there's a chance to have fun looking at words and letters. And math lesson involves playing with petitioning fractions. And in science, we'll investigate toys from different parts of the world. I hope you are all here to learn with your thinking caps at the ready. Let's go. kids, you know what time it is. The first thing we're going to do is get warmed up with a movement exercise. Exercise makes our bodies and minds function at their best. And today we have AFL player Harris Andrews on the show to help get us started. Hi, I'm Harris Andrews from the Brisbane Lions. And just like you, I've been stuck at home the last couple of weeks. During this time, I've found it really important to focus on doing some exercise, keeping fit and looking after my health and well-being. I've got a couple of exercises to keep you guys really active at home. These exercises are what we do in AFL. The first exercise that I'm gonna talk about is trunk rotation. So what you're gonna do is put your hands on your hips and you're gonna rotate side to side. Start the exercise, get your core switched on, side to side. The second exercise that I'll be showing you today is leg swings. So making sure you plant your foot on the ground really strong and then you come through and do a couple of leg swings either side, making sure you extend your leg up in the air. So make sure you do both sides. And the last exercise that I'll be showing you today is the stalk stand and hold. So planting one foot on the ground, you want to lift your foot up and you want to see how long you can stay balanced on that one foot for. Obviously swap side to side and really test yourself out. It's really important when doing these exercises, you make sure you've got enough of room around you in the house and just want to say a big thank you for listening and have a great day. And... Good job, everyone. You can all sit back down now because Laura is going to share a story with you. And I wonder what this story is about. Today, you will also have fun looking at words and letters. Enjoy reading and writing. Hi there. How are you today? My name's Laura and this is Rex. Today, we're going to read a story about Rex. This is the front cover of the story. Hmm, I can see a bone on the front cover. The title of our story is Rex Does Tricks. I wonder what tricks Rex can do. What do you think? Let's now read the story Rex Does Tricks to find out. Rex is a dog. <laughs> Rex does tricks. Not tricks like this. A dog like Rex does not beg. A dog like Rex does tricks like this. Rex does flips in his jet. Rex dips and drops. Can Rex do a triple flip? You bet! At the end of the day, Rex is fed and put to bed. Just like any pet. Wow, that was a great story. Rex, you can do amazing tricks in your jet. What about you? What tricks can you do? Now we're going to have a look at some words in the text, Rex does tricks. We're going to look at high frequency words. What's that, Rex? 
Rick says high frequency words are the most commonly used words in books or stories. Here are two high frequency words. The and is. These are words that appear in a lot of the books we read. First, let's look for the word the in this sentence. At the end of the day, Rex is fed and put to bed. Did you find the word the? Wow, the word the appears twice. At the end of the day, Rex is fed and put to bed. Nice work. Let's try it with our other high frequency word, is. Let's read the sentence and see if you can find the word is. At the end of the day, Rex is fed and put to bed. Hmm, there it is. Did you find it? Great work. Make sure you look out for these words in the books you're reading. Rex has an idea. Now we're going to look at the letter E and the short sound it can make in words like Rex. Let's underline the letter E making the short S sound in the word Rex. Ready? Nice one. Here's another word that has the short S sound in the middle of it. Do you know this word? That's right, it's jet. Let's see if we can find that short S sound in the word j, e, t. Great work. Can you think of other words that have the E sound in the middle? Maybe you thought of fed, bed, or maybe even, that's right, Rex, pet. Perhaps your name starts with the letter E, like Erin or Edward. Or maybe you have a name that has an E in the middle, like Meg or Ben. Now we're going to use the learning object right on to see how to write lowercase and uppercase E. <laughs> Uppercase E. Start at the star. Top to bottom stop. Left to right stop. Left to right stop. Left to right stop. Start at the star. Top to bottom stop. Left to right stop. Left to right stop. Left to right stop. Lowercase e. Start at the star. Up and round, smooth turn, down, quick turn up, stop. Start at the star. Up and round, smooth turn, down, quick turn up, stop. Rex, you've had a great idea. He said let's practice writing lowercase e with flower. I'm going to start here and go up, around, smooth, turn down, quick turn up and stop. Nice work. You can also practice writing letters using Play-Doh. I'm going to practice writing an uppercase E using Play-Doh. First, you need to write, okay, I'll just roll this out a little bit. First, you need to write top to bottom, stop, then left to right, stop, left to right, stop. Left 
left to right, stop. That was fun. Today we looked at high frequency words like is and the. We learned that high frequency words are the most commonly used words in books and stories. We talked about the letter E and the sound it can make in words like Rex, pet and bed. We learned how to write lowercase e and uppercase e. Gosh, we learned a lot. Now it's your turn. Go on a word hunt and see if you can find high frequency words like is and the. Hunt for the letter e around your house and tell someone the sound it makes in words you find. You might even like to use flower or play-doh to write the letter e. Have fun and see you next time. Bye. It's now time for mathematics. Today, we'll be thinking about fractions, in particular, halves. Monique will show you how to share into two parts, or halves, making sure that they are equal. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Monique. Today, we are learning about fractions. Remember, fractions are equal parts of a whole. A whole can be shared into equal parts by cutting, folding, pouring or weighing. This sharing of a whole into parts is called partitioning. Today, we will be partitioning whole objects into halves. Now, before we get started, I just have to finish organising the morning tea for everyone here. I have made sandwiches. I have two plates with one sandwich on each plate. I have already cut the sandwich on this plate in half, but I need to cut the sandwich on this plate in half. I have to make sure they are a fair share and that they're cut in halves. That means each half of the sandwich is equal. Okay, I'm cutting the sandwich now. <sighs> there, all done. Oh wait. This sandwich is not cut into halves. The pieces are not equal. Hmm. I know that one half is one of two equal parts of a whole. I wonder how I could check if one part of the whole is equal to the other part of the whole. I know, I will place one part on top of the other part to check if they are equal parts. Yes, on this plate, this is one half and this is one half. They are equal parts. And now to see if this sandwich is cut into halves, I will place one half on top of the other to check if they are equal parts. Oh no, they are not equal. One part is smaller than the other part. They are not halves because they are not equal. I think that when I finish our lesson, I'll go back and fix up our sandwich so that each piece is one half and everyone has a fair share. I'm going to look at some other objects to continue our learning about partitioning into halves. Here I have a whole piece of ribbon and I want to partition it into halves. I want to check that each part is one half, so I'm going to fold it in the middle before I cut it with scissors. There, I have folded it so that one part is exactly the same length as the other part. The fold tells me where I can divide it to make it two equal parts. And when I place them next to each other, each part is equal. They are each one half. 
So folding before partitioning can make equal parts. Next, I have one whole jug of juice and two glasses. The glasses are the same. I'm going to partition the whole amount of juice into two equal parts. To do that, I will pour half the juice into one glass and then pour the rest into the other glass. There. When I look at the glasses next to each other, I can see they have the same amount of juice. The jug of juice was poured so that each glass had one half of the juice. Let's partition one more hole into halves. I have this packet of butter and I want to partition it into two equal parts. So I'm going to put each piece of butter onto the scales so that I can check that each is the same and that they are equal. Putting the first piece on now. Mm. And the second piece. There, finished. The scale reads 200 grams for the mass of this part of the butter and the scale reads 200 grams for the mass of this part of the butter. Each piece of butter is the same, so they are equal halves of the one whole of butter. Wow, we have learned so much about partitioning holes into two equal parts today. We have learned that when you partition into two equal parts, each part is one half. We call these halves. We have also learned that you can partition a hole by cutting, folding, pouring and weighing. And that it is important to check to make sure each part is exactly one half. I'm going to finish making that sandwich for morning tea now. There, they are equal parts. Each half is the same. It is a fair share. You might like to practice partitioning to make halves when you are next helping to make a sandwich, if you are helping an adult prepare food in the kitchen, or just with some other everyday objects like ribbon or paper. Bye everyone. The next people we're going to meet are some of our music students. Let's see what they've been up to while we've all been at home. Usually my favourite instrument to play is the trumpet, but lately I've been trying to learn the ukulele, but I'm not very good, so bear with me. All right, so we have C, A, and F. Ooh, I might need to work a little bit more on that, but either way, music makes me happy. Hi everyone, I'm Olive. It's been so much fun getting to know students from all around Queensland and asking them some fun questions. Today we asked them about a musical instrument that they play. What are their lessons like? What music piece do they like to play? Here are some of the fantastic answers they sent through. I play the violin. My teacher says my bubbly personality suits the violin. So I play the viola and it's like a violin except it's bigger and it has different strings and my favourite part of playing the viola is playing in an orchestra with all of my friends every single week. I play the clarinet mainly and I take lessons with the conservatorium with my teacher there. Um, we try different learning techniques every week just to have a bit of variety and it really helps me learning different and new things. I play a large percussion instrument called a marimba, which is basically like a giant xylophone. I like to play four mallets on it because it increases my skills. I play percussion, but mainly the drums, and have been since I was four years old. I play the flute, I also play the violin, and we both play percussion! I play the trumpet, and I love to play all kinds of music. 
I played the trumpet and started playing the cornet in year one. Welcome back to Learning at Home TV. For as long as anyone can remember, people have made toys for children. Today in science, we're going to explore toys from many different parts of the world, as David shares his third lesson about pushes and pulls. Hi. We've been looking at toys that work with a push or a pull or a twist. Today we're looking at some more that come from different parts of the world. Do you have some balls at your place? Maybe you have different types. Big ones, small ones, small ones. Ones that you bounce. You might have a tennis ball that you hit with a racket or a push. Golf balls that hit with a stick, another type of push. All over the world people play games where they make balls move by hitting, kicking or throwing. They're usually types of pushes. This one's interesting, it's made of cane from vines and it's woven. It comes from Malaysia, which is about where this dot is in Asia. They use this for a game a little bit like volleyball with a net and teams each side, but instead of hitting it over with their hands, they use their feet. It's been pretty hard when you kick that, but it's nice and light and very strong. OK, from another part of the world, we're right at the top here in Russia. This toy, we've looked at this one before too, it's called a babushka doll, and it's a pull. It's just a simple thing. You pull the top, it's nice and tight, and it shows there's another doll, and I pull that, and we find more. Oh, and there's lots more inside. So that's a simple pull. Another toy here. These are really common all over the world, as far back as people can tell. It's a spinner. And if I spin it like this, some places they call them whirly gig. In, um, just get that and pull and pull again, and it'll start to twist. And here we go. And now it's spinning really nicely. And that's fun. I can pull and relax it, pull, and that goes really well. There's lots of different versions of those. In North America, people used to make them out of buttons. This one doesn't work very well because it's too light. It needs to be a bit heavier. In some places, I know in Australia, Aboriginal people made them, they could make a humming sound. I tried making one with holes and things on it to make it hum, but it didn't really work. But I know that in northern Queensland, around here, they, um, the Aboriginal people call this toy a norgo. I saw a picture of this one. I'm not sure where this uh, idea came from. This is an Australian Aboriginal idea where they just join two sticks together and put a couple of holes in. And this one actually works pretty well. It's just a copy I made. So I'll pull it and it's got a nice sound. Okay, so that's our spinners. Another one that was really common for Aboriginal people all around Australia were spinning tops. They made them out of all sorts of things. They made big, heavy, carved stone ones. They made some others that just had a disc of beeswax with a stick through it. Sometimes they would just poke a, um, a little piece of straw through a, um, through a gum nut. But a spinning top just works like these ones and I give them a twist to get them started. I've got another one here. It's a spinning top too, but it's not a twist. It's got this handle, and if you look at the string, you can see it's wrapped around. So when I pull, can you see what's going to happen? <laughs> Went too well. Okay. 
Um, what have we got next? Guiro. This is a toy musical instrument. It comes from Puerto Rico, which is an island near the middle of America. And it's a push. I've got this stick, and if I push, I get that sound. So I said this is that's a plastic toy one, but here's a more serious one that a musician friend of mine owns. And this one is made of wood. And So by pushing the stick along, you can get rhythmic sounds along these bumps. Okay, here's another musical toy. Now we're going to go to Africa, in the west of Africa. And um, these are seed pods. So that was hanging on a tree, and the seeds are still inside, so it rattles when you shake it. And when I put it in my hand, I can't use this properly, but musician friends can make it play a really nice rhythm. So that's a push and pull movement as well while it's shaking. Okay, so let's look back on what we've learned today. We now know that people make different kinds of toys all over the world. And we know that many toys use pushes or pulls or twists. I wonder if you could make a toy that you push or pull or spin. Maybe you could try making one of these spinners. If you used a few layers of cardboard and put a couple of holes through, got some string, you might be able to make one that works. See what you can come up with and have fun. Thanks for that, David. Juiced TV is up next. Now, Juiced TV is a show made by kids at Queensland Children's Hospital for the kids in the hospital. Let's check out their story about drawing caricatures. A caricature is a picture of a person in which certain characteristics are exaggerated to create a comic effect. Hi, guys. I'm Shalina, and I'm here with David. Hi, guys. I'm David. Hi, Shalina. Thanks for having me. I like to do all kinds of art. I like to do collages and paintings. And drawing too. My favourite thing to draw are flowers, dolphins and fishes. And the best thing about art is that there's no mistakes. And that's why I invited Dave here today because he's a professional artist. That's right. Um, I've been drawing since I was your age and one of my favourite things to do is draw caricatures. I can't even say that word. What is it? <laughs> uh, it's actually pronounced caricature. It's a cartoon version of a normal face where you can exaggerate things, make it a big nose, big, big set of ears, that kind of thing. Basically cartoonifying a face. I've got to see this. Can you draw me? Sure I can. Usually I just start off doing a little sketch first, just so I know, just to give me an idea of um, where I'm going to put everything. So have you ever seen these done before? No. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want me to draw a uh, big funny moustache on you? No? What about a little one? No? Not even a little one? How long have you been drawing for? Since I was five. Did you watch lots of cartoons when you were a kid? I did used to watch cartoons a lot when I was a kid. Uh, I watch them a lot when I'm an adult too. <laughs> How's it looking? Yeah, it's looking okay. Are you getting nervous? <laughs> it's nearly finished. Don't forget to get my big smile. How could I miss that big smile? Alright, we're just about done. Okay, you ready for your big reveal? Alright, here we go. One, two, three. Funny. <laughs> It's like a big 
silly version of me. Yeah, so I just tried to capture your nice, big, pretty eyes and uh, your big smile and um, your carefree attitude as well with the peace sign. Okay, David, now it's time for me to do a character of you. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Make sure you draw my good side. I'm gonna draw your silly side. Oh, not my silly side. Looking pretty good. You can draw a moustache on me if you like. And I'll finish it off with your black shot. The most important part. Oh wow, it's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> well done. I got your ears. I got your eyes and I got your double muscles. Very good. Thanks for coming here today, David. That's okay. Thanks for having me. And um, I think you uh, taught me a few good tips as well. Thanks. See you later, guys. See you later. English, tick. Maths, tick. Science, tick. I think that we've all done pretty well this morning and that we've earned ourselves a brain break. And then probably a big drink of water. It will be time for the middle primary lessons next, so I'll say goodbye now and I'll see you all again soon. Hi, I'm Brandon Ellis from the Gold Coast Suns. I'm at home just like you. How about we get up and get active? I'm gonna take you through three exercises today. The first one is, is you want to put the ball between your legs in a figure eight position. So you want to bend the knees, bend the hips, and we'll see how fast you can do it. Come on, I bet you can go quicker than that. Second exercise is we're going to get into a plank position. So you want to get on your knees, get on your hands, and put your feet back and get into a plank. Third exercise is you want to get back down into a plank position and see if you can do half a burpee. So the first move is you want to put your feet up to your hands, then jump up, that's in two moves. And then the next one, you want to get back down in two moves again. Thanks for having me, guys, and go Suns.